broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Megan from Child Trends. I just wanted to let you all know that the call will be recorded and we will send out the slides at the end of the call. Uh, throughout the call, if you have any questions, uh, clarifying or technical issues, please feel free to add your questions to the question or chat box and we will respond to them throughout. There will be a small break just to ask any questions, so make sure if you have any, you can add them then and we'll address them as we can. If there are any additional questions that we're not able to get to before the end of the call, we will follow up with those at the end. Thanks so much. Take it away. Thank you, Megan. Good afternoon and welcome to the Early Childhood Data Collaborative's webinar to share results from our 2018 Early Childhood Data Systems Survey. My name is Carlise King and I'm the Executive Director of the Early Childhood Data Collaborative and your host for today's webinar. As Megan mentioned, uh, we'll be recording this webinar and sending out a copy of the PowerPoint slides. They'll be, mail, they'll be made available on the Early Childhood Data Collaborative website, and a link will go out to everyone who registered for the webinar once the materials are posted. Due to the large number of people we have participating on the call, the call will be muted for all attendees, but please submit your questions throughout the webinar. Uh, we will be taking short breaks in between our presentations to respond to questions and le leave some additional time at the end of the call as well. My co-presenter today will be Tori Perkins, a research analyst at Child Trends who worked on the analysis and development of the final report. Our goal for the webinar today is to share with you key findings from our new report. First, I'll share a bit about a bit of background about the Early Childhood Data Collaborative, how this survey fits into our overall mission and work. Next, I will review the scope of the 2018 survey and how it differs from past surveys, and also let you know how you can access your state data online. Tori will then describe in more detail the survey design, methodology, and findings from our 2018 survey, focusing on the coordination of child, program, and workforce data systems. I will conclude the presentation by sharing where states are in establishing governance structures and policies to support the use of early childhood data. As I mentioned before, please submit questions throughout the web webinar using your question box located on your panel. We will take breaks to respond to them. So the Early Childhood Data Collaborative was established in 2009 with the mission to promote both policies and practices which support the development and use of coordinated longitudinal early childhood data. Our goal is to transform existing data systems traditionally used to comply with funding reporting into improvement driven systems, generating data which can be used to guide decision making and inform policies at all levels. Our vision is that key decision makers have access to comprehensive data on early childhood investments to identify gaps and to track progress. We believe that making data available to stakeholders will support policy efforts to increase children's access to high quality early care and education programs, improve the quality of early childhood of those programs, and address workforce development needs and ultimately to create systems and services which promote the positive development of our most vulnerable children. Having comprehensive data about early childhood investments also informs equity policy concerns related to equal access to early childhood services. For example, issues related to preschool expulsion as well as access to training opportunities for our diverse workforce. The goal of our 2018 survey was to assess states on early child on the go back one. The goal of our 2018 survey was to assess states on the early childhood data collaboratives 10 fundamentals of a coordinated data system. 
ECDC identified these fundamentals, components of a data system to answer questions about the number of children served across early care and education programs, to look at the supply of high quality programs and the characteristics of, early, of the early childhood workforce. Before we share the findings, I first want to review with you how we've defined early childhood services for the purpose of this survey, explain the types of questions we asked, and how our 2018 survey differs from the surveys we've done in the past. Before I continue, I would also like to thank all of the state contacts who took the time to complete the survey this past year. We really appreciate the time and the care you took in providing this information. I also would like to take a moment to thank our ECDC partners at the National Governors Association Center for Best Practices, the National Conference of State Legislators, the Council of Chief State School Officers, Center for the Study of Child Care Employment at UC Berkeley, and Data Quality Campaign for their input on the survey as well as our final report. And last, I would like to thank the Alliance for Early Success and the Richard W. Goldman Family Foundation for their generous funding, which made this report possible. Part of our work communicating what it means to integrate data and why having data about children from birth is so critical. The right interventions at the right time have the potential to change a child's learning trajectory, resulting in positive health, learning, and economic outcomes later in life. Gaps in children's learning and development appear well before kindergarten and continue over time. To support children's optimal development, policymakers, teachers, and parents need timely and accurate data about children's needs in order to implement appropriate interventions and supports. This is critical because how we do and do not support children early has consequences for, additional, for what additional supports a child may need later in life. But the challenge we face is, about, is that the data about children served in early childhood programs in most states is disconnected and not collected in a way that allows us to look at trends over time. This graphic shows the six early childhood programs ECDC focuses on in our survey to measure states' capacity to integrate early childhood and other supports for children across health, education, and social service agencies. The programs include going from the top with the orange, orange sector, home visiting, and Head Start, which offer a range of array of services for pregnant mothers and children through age five. At the bottom, early intervention and preschool special education, which serve children birth to five experiencing developmental delays. Pre-kindergarten programs, which vary from targeted to universal in states, serving children from three to five years. And last, we track subsidized childcare funded through the Child Care Development Block Grant. These child care assistance programs provide financial assistance to help families access child care services for their children birth through age 13. To be able to answer questions about access, program quality, and workforce needs, states need the capacity to connect these data to gain a complete picture of children's early learning experiences. These programs may look different or include additional programs in your state, but for the purposes for, of this of our study, we asked states specifically about their capacity to collect and connect data around these early childhood programs with other services. On the next slide, I will outline the fundamentals needed to facilitate the linkages and protection of data to answer these larger policy questions. Our 10 fundamentals are organized by child, program, and workforce level data. Governance and linkages with other data systems are also addressed. These components are the framework ECDC used to develop our survey questions and assess states' capacity to connect siloed data systems. Going across, our fundamentals one, five, and seven focus on having a method for identifying unique children, programs, and staff participating in those programs. This means data can be linked across 
to know if a child is being served in one or more program, as well as to exa examine changes over time. The next set of fundamentals, two, three, six, and eight going across, are the collection of development, participation, and characteristics data to understand which children are participating in which programs, the characteristics of those programs, and qualifications and experience of, of early childhood staff. We asked states to report whether they were linking child program or workforce data, and also which types of data are linked in, these, in their systems. Fundamental four, connecting child level data to K-12 health and social services databases, focuses on states' capacity to document how children, how children transition to school, what other supportive services ch a child and family may be receiving, and the relationship between programs to better coordinate services. Last, Fundamentals 9 and 10 address the protection and use of early childhood data. As these systems are developed, it's important that there is a governance, governance body managing the collection and use of any data so there are transparent policies and guidelines on what data should be collected, how the, how the data are used, and how it will be protected um, and communicated to all stakeholders, especially parents. The 2018 survey included questions about the, state, the state's capacity to link child level data across ECE programs, as I mentioned before, looking at the top of the screen going down, with health data, social services data, and K through 12 databases, which Tori will define in more detail. We also asked about state's capacity to link ECE program and staff data. The final questions cover the establishment of a governance structure and primary uses of early childhood data. Next, I will talk about the ch what, you will, what you will see new in our 2018 survey. For those of you who are familiar with our 2013 survey, in that, in that year, we focused our questions on states' capacity to link child-level data only. In our 2018 survey, we expanded our questions to include linkages related to program and workforce data. We also asked about how states were using integrated data for the first time. In some areas of our survey, the questions changed or were expanded. For example, questions about data governance in our 2018 survey included questions about access and security policies which weren't included in our 2013 survey. We detail all of these changes in our final report. Where possible, in the final report, we note changes from 2013. Tori will also share these changes as she reviews the findings in more detail. We will not be able to go through every question outlined in the report on the webinar today, but we encourage you to review the report and to access your state results online. In the coming year, we will be developing additional policy briefs, webinars, uh, and presentations to share state examples and to go deeper into some of the survey findings. On our website, you can access the national results. On this slide, you see each state's status is color-coded. In the upper right-hand corner, you can click on a different indicator to switch the national map view. If you see, for example, in this graphic here, Minnesota links data between all or some of their ECE programs. So once you're in this view, you can click on any of the state options. This will take you to your state profile that will look like this, where you can view or download the results from your state. The state's results are organized by section tabs along the top. If you're interested in your state's governance information, for example, you can go directly to that tab. Please be aware that we only have additional details for states that reported that they were linking child program or workforce level data. If your state does not currently have a functioning early childhood integrated data system or reports that they are linking data, your responses on the state profiles may appear as missing or as not applicable in those cases. A 
Okay, I'm just going to pause for a second to see if there are any questions that came through before I hand the presentation over to Tori. Nope. Seeing none, I will hand things over to Tori. Again, please be sure to submit any questions that you have um, as, the pro as the presentation goes on. Tori? Great. Can everyone hear me? Can you hear me, Carlise? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, so I'll start just by describing a little bit about the methodology for the survey. So we administered the survey online from April to June of this past year, and we had all 50 states respond. Um, and because we were asking about multiple programs under different agencies, we identified a main contact in each state um, who was identified to respond to the survey and also coordinate with other program leads in their state. So the majority of respondents to the survey were from departments of health, social, human and family services, and state departments of education. Uh, we also had some respondents from early childhood advisory councils, offices of early learning, and other um, organizations related to those. And after we closed the survey and did some analysis, we also gave states the opportunity to review their profile information and make any corrections. And after states reviewed, we did make, end up making some corrections to state data based on their feedback. All right, so now we can actually move into the results. So states were asked about their ability to securely link child level data collected across their ECE programs. And the ability to link child data across databases means that information about an individual child is connected across those programs and over time. So for example, if a child attended a state pre-kindergarten program and switched to Head Start mid-year because the family moved or some other reason, a program administrator would be able to connect that information about that child from both programs. And this is important because it really it helps policymakers make a more accurate count of children being served across their programs um, and it reduces duplication of those counts. Um, so you'll see here on the map, and I just I do want to note that this is meant to be a representation. We know that um, this is not a most, the most accurate view of what the United States looks like, but um, it's just meant to be a representation. So the dark orange puzzle pieces represent those states that reported linking child level data, which was a little less than half of states. And the light orange puzzle pieces are those states that said they plan to link this data, which was about 20% of states. And then the white puzzle pieces are those that reported not linking this data and not having plans to link it, which was about 30% of states. Um, we also found that of those states that said they were linking child level data, most of them were implementing an ECIDS to facilitate that linking. Um, so we also asked states that were linking child level data for which programs they were doing that. Um, and a majority of states linked data for children enrolled in subsidized childcare, state pre-kindergarten, preschool special education, or early intervention programs. Um, children enrolled in home visiting or federally funded Head Start were less likely to be included in coordinated data systems. And this could be explained by the fact that these data tend to be reported and remain at the local level, and that can be a barrier to including them in state data systems. So when we look at these uh, numbers compared to the results from the 2013 survey, we find that in general, fewer states reported linking data between all of their ECE programs except for subsidized childcare and federal funded Head Start, which both saw an increase from 2013 to 2018. Um, and then we didn't collect any information about home visiting data in the 2013 survey, so we don't have a comparison there. Um, and I'll just note that in the final report and online, we also detailed the types of information that states could link from at least one of these programs. So information included things like child demographic data, program participation data, family data, and developmental data. And then we also dug into um, the types of developmental data that states were collecting. So if you want some more information about the types of data that your state collects, or you just want to play around on the website and see what types of data other states are collecting, I really would encourage you to visit the website and look at that national map and the state profiles. Um, and then for, throughout the final report and through this uh, presentation, we highlight some examples of states that are meeting the fundamentals that Carlise mentioned earlier. And Georgia's ECIDS is their cross-agency child data system, and it links data across all major early care and education programs in Georgia. So by securely linking data across ECE programs, state policymakers in Georgia have access to data to identify service gaps, 
target services for vulnerable children, and support research on program outcomes. And this graph is from data that I pulled directly from Georgia's cross-agency child data system. And it shows the percentage of children ages zero to five in, in programs per, that are captured in Georgia's um, data system and that are receiving at least one or more uh, of those services. So um, what we found from this is that about 18% of children are receiving two or more services captured in Georgia's um, data system. All right, so we also asked states about their capacity to link child level data, um, ECE data with health data. And knowledge of children's early health and development is really vital to understanding the health of a state's population both now and in the future. So by collecting and linking data on individual children's health, as well as the health services and early childhood services they receive, states have a clearer picture of a, whole, a child's whole health and development. And policy makers can also use these data to answer important policy questions related to early health intervention services and children's development. So again, looking at the national map, um, I'm going to point your attention to the dark orange puzzle pieces of the states that can link health data, and that's about 16% of states. Uh, the remaining states are split between those that say they plan to link this data and those that do not link. And those are, again, the light puzzle pieces are those who are planning, and the white ones are those who are um, not linking and do not have plans to link. Uh, we also asked states that do link health data, what types of health data they collect. And on the survey, we defined health data as birth records, immunization records, special supplemental nutritional program for women, infants, and children, or WIC data, and Medicaid data. And of those states, Oklahoma, Mississippi, and Rhode Island reported linking all four types of health data that we asked about. Um, Rhode Island KidsNet is another example of a state that's um, meeting these the fundamentals. So KidsNet securely links child health data and tracks public health services to inform preventative health policies for young children. KidsNet, which includes programs like newborn screening, birth defects programs, and lead poisoning prevention, links with their ECEDS, which includes their Bright Stars program, which is Rhode Island's um, quality rating and improvement system. Um, so we also asked about the capacity to link child level data with social services data and children enrolled in early care and education services may live in families receiving supportive social services like cash assistance, child welfare, nutritional services or housing assistance. So to understand how well these services are serving children and families, states need to be able to securely link these data to identify service gaps. And by doing so, policymakers can answer policy questions about the reach of programs and their effect on the well-being of families with young children. Um, looking at the national map, we see that about 20% of states, again, those dark puzzle pieces, um, do link this data. The light orange puzzle pieces are the states that plan to link this, this data, and that's about 30% of states. And then the white puzzle pieces are the states not linking this data and not planning to, which was about half of states. Um, again, we asked states about the type of social services data that they could collect. Um, on the survey, we defined social services data as temporary assistance for needy families or TANF records, child welfare data, supplemental nutritional assistance program or SNAP data, and housing assistance. Um, and of those states, Mississippi and Vermont reported being able to link all social services data. And again, I'll just say, if you are really interested in what your state is, is linking um, or, and collecting, I really encourage you to go to the website and click around and find out. Um, so Minnesota is another example of a state that's meeting our fundamentals. And Minnesota's Early Childhood Longitudinal Data System, or ECLDS, securely links data from the state's Department of uh, Departments of Education, Human Services, and Health. And the ECLDS uh, includes a web-based portal for the public to access de-identified aggregate level data to run standard reports and conduct analyses. So this means that groups outside of the government, like nonprofit human services agencies, can use the information to better serve their, their communities. Um, and even just everyday citizens can go on the web portal and play around with it and learn a lot about the types of children um, and the types of care that they're receiving in Minnesota. Um, so again, I just pulled this chart from data directly from their web portal, and it shows the um, kindergartners who participate 
participated in early care and education programs that were included in the Minnesota system grouped by the social services they receive. So we can see that most children in the early childhood family education program, which offers classes, programs, and services for children with young families, were receiving no assistance, while the majority of children in the child care assistance program um, were receiving, uh, which is a, a, a program that provides financial assistance to help families pay for child care, uh, were receiving MFIP, which is Minnesota's Family Initiative Program and food assistance. And that MFIP, I'll just point out, is Minnesota's version of TANF. All right, so we also asked states about their capacity to link ECE data with K-12 data. Um, and the tra transition from early childhood care settings to kindergarten is one of the most significant milestones in a young child's life. And access to information about children's readiness for kindergarten and their subsequent success in the K-12 system is really key during this transitional period. And states that can link data between ECE data systems and the K-12 system are really uniquely positioned to answer important policy questions regarding ways to address school readiness and increase equity in educational outcomes. So looking at the map, uh, the, light, the dark orange puzzle pieces sh are, show that um, a little less than half reported the capacity to link child level and K-12 data. Um, the light orange puzzle pieces show that roughly one third of states are planning to link this data. And then the white puzzle pieces show that about 20% of states do not plan to link this data. Um, so we also asked states about their capacity to capture and link kindergarten entry assessment data. And by linking KEA data with ECE data at the state level, policymakers can make informed decisions regarding their policies and practices that support high quality early childhood programs and enhance kindergarten programs readiness for children as they transition to the school setting. So over half of the states, we, 50 states we surveyed, reported that they capture child level KEA data. And then of those states, um, further half or 15 states said that they had the capacity to link the KEA data with their data system, with their um, state data system. Um, so we also asked uh, states, you know, which programs they could link K-12 data with. And um, this was asked only of those states who said that they could link that data. So of those 22 states that reported linking K-12 data, nearly all link state pre-kindergarten child data. And most states also link preschool, special education, early intervention, and subsidized child care data. States were less likely to link federally funded Head Start data and home visiting data. And remember that, um, as I mentioned earlier, those states tend to house data at the local level, which can be a barrier to inclusion in state systems. Compared to the results from the 2013 survey, fewer states reported linking ECA, ECE data and K-12 data for all programs except subsidized child care, which again saw a rise from 2013 to 2018. And I'll just note, we did not collect the home visiting data in 2013, so we don't have a comparison there. So Mississippi is another example that we highlight in our report. Mississippi's life track system securely links early childhood K-12 post-secondary education and workforce data. Um, data are collected to inform decisions to improve education and workforce outcomes. So with longitudinal data on, ch on children's development, policymakers in Mississippi can answer questions about children's school and career readiness. And uh, Mississippi also uses life tracks to produce research reports on topics like teacher quality and student performance and the impact of Head Start participation. So on the 2018 survey, Mississippi reported linking K-12 data with all major ECE programs and they also collect and link KEA data. All right, so now we're going to move on to program level data. So we've been focusing mostly on child level data and now we're going to move on to program level data. So linking program level data means having the ability to collect information about the quality and other characteristics of individual early learning programs. Um, it's also a way to link these programs with the children that they serve. So collecting, linking, and tracking these data about ECE programs helps states get a clearer picture of their child care um, supply. And policymakers can use these data to answer questions about characteristics of high quality programs, working conditions, and the capacity to serve children in different types of ECE settings. 
For example, states can see that Program X, um, which receives Head Start and state pre-kindergarten funding, maybe increased its quality rating from 2015 to 2017. So that's just a really concrete example of the types of information that um, states might be able to, to track. Um, so uh, looking at the national map, um, we see this pullout box shows you that most states reported having an operational quality rating and improvement system, which measures the quality of early learning programs and provides supports to providers to improve their level of quality. Um, so we see that a little less than half of states link program site level data across some or all of their ECE programs. And it's important to note that though most states have a QRIS, they might not have the capacity to link that data. Um, so they, they're housing data about programs, but it might not necessarily be linked to um, other systems. And we think this will be an important follow-up with states to better understand their capacity um, around data. So another roughly 30% are in the, of states are in the process uh, or planning to link program site level data, and the remaining 20% reported that, that they do not link program level data. Um, so of those states linking uh, program level data, the majority have the capacity to link data with subsidized childcare, licensed childcare, and state pre-kindergarten. Um, just over one third of states link site level data with federally funded Head Start, and a smaller number of states link site level data with databases for preschool special education, early intervention, and home visiting. And um, again, in our report and online, we have more information about the types of data that states are collecting about programs. So we asked about um, quality data, we asked about working conditions data, licensing, um, structural standards, things like that. So if you have uh, an interest in that, um, definitely go check out the website and check out our report for more information about those. Um, all right, so Pennsylvania is another example that we highlight in the report. And Pennsylvania's Enterprise to Link Children Across Network, or Pelican, is a data partnership between the Department of Public Welfare and the Office of Child Development and Early Learning. Pelican includes a Master Provider Index, or MPI, which is used to share and update changes to a provider's information with the appropriate data systems. Uh, the MPI also links with the Master Client Index, or MCI, which contains important data about the children and families being served. So linking these data allows policymakers to access information regarding which programs serve the most children and the characteristics of those programs. All right, now we're gonna move on to workforce level data. Um, so linking workforce level data means having the ability to follow individual childcare workers over time and across programs. And anyone who has spent any time working in the early childhood field knows that issues of high turnover, low pay and burnout are endemic to the childcare workforce. Um, so many pro proposed policy solutions to improve childcare access and quality center on professionalizing the childcare workforce. And um, as such, data collected in this area allows states to understand one of the most important components of their childcare programs. So by linking workforce level data across ECE programs, states can see how individuals move within their workforce. So for example, if a childcare worker moves from subsidized childcare program to a Head Start center, um, they can also see trends across the workforce. So for example, how many people left the childcare workforce altogether in a given year. So this is really important data to be collecting. Um, and you'll see that uh, we have here on the map, 84% of states have a workforce registry. Um, and registries typically track education, training, and employment information, but the scope and data capacity of registries really varies. So while most states have a workforce registry, we found that um, only 15 states reported linking individual workforce level data across ECE programs. So states that were reported having a workforce registry but not linking data, again, just similar to the QRIS, they likely house that individual workforce data in their registry but don't link it with other ECE data. Um, and then this map is a little bit different from the other maps. We have a few more response options here. So you'll see the sort of striped puzzle pieces are those states that said they collect workforce data, they have the capacity to link it, but they're not currently doing so. 
Um, and that was seven states that said that. And then about a third of states are planning to link workforce level data. Again, that's the light orange puzzle pieces. And then the remaining 10 states neither have the capacity or plans to link workforce data. Those are the white puzzle pieces again. Um, so we also asked states about the type of workforce data they collect, including employment information, education and professional development, demographics, background checks, and information about participation in workforce initiatives. And again, that is all highlighted in our final report and on the website. So I really encourage you to visit the website and play around with that data to learn more about that. Um, so Illinois is another example. Um, oh, one second before I move on to Illinois. I just wanna highlight that we also wanted to know which ECE programs were linking workforce data. So among those 15 states that said they are linking workforce across ECE databases, most link data about staff working in licensed childcare settings or state pre-kindergartens. And then less than half link individual workforce level data from subsidized childcare and federally funded Head Start, home visiting, early intervention, or preschool special education programs. All right, so Illinois Gateways to Opportunity Workforce Registry um, is used to manage the education, training, and credentials of ECE professionals in Illinois. And data from the registry are used to produce an annual report on workforce trends related to changing demographics, education levels, training participation, and wages. And um, this is information that I pulled from a recent report from Illinois using the gateways to opportunity data. And um, you'll see that they found a really dramatic increase in staff receiving gateways credentials over the last two years. So the percent of licensed center directors holding a gateways ECE credential increased from 5% in 2015 to 26% in 2017. And teachers holding the same credential increased from 4% to 23%. So this is a really cool um, example of the types of information that states can get from their registries. All right, and now I'm actually gonna pass it back to Carlise to finish this off with talking about data governance. Thank you, Tori. And we did have a few questions come through. So I'm, I'm gonna quickly just, I responded to folks online, but um, just so that the whole group can hear them. Uh, one of the questions was, do any states have legislation that authorizes the sharing um, or other strategies? Uh, the answer was yes. We had three states that reported establishing at least their data governance structure through legislation. Um, we have more we can follow up for more details of exactly which those states are and I'll be talking more about the state's data governance in the next section. Um, another person asked about where the list of state contacts who responded to the survey are. It's available in our report in the Appendix A. So if you wanted to see who responded or completed the survey for your state, you'll be able to see um, by state who that contact person was. Uh, the next question was, did you ask which aggregate data, especially the link data, is available to the public? And then do you have states that have common public site for accessing and sharing the data? So we, didn't, we did ask if states have a public report available using their data, um, but we tended to highlight um, some of the examples that Tori already shared, sites that did have data publicly available. So as Tori mentioned, Georgia has an online portal. Um, Minnesota has an online portal where they, their link data is publicly available, as well as North Carolina, which we're, we haven't highlighted in this report, but we've highlighted in other resources and publications that we have. And then the last question was, I'll, I'll highlight here and I'll get to the rest of them a little later. Can your data be integrated with other data such as child abuse and neglect? Um, and so we didn't ask specifically about other linkages, but if states um, have common IDs that allow them to share and connect that data, um, we have worked with states that have been able to connect their state data for the purposes of other research questions that they have um, when the data is collected in a way where they can identify specific children and programs over time. All right, that was quite a few. I see some other ones coming through. Um, 
there were a few questions just in terms of if we knew why we were seeing the trends that we do, and I'll be discussing that a little bit more at the end with the findings. So thank you everyone for your questions. Please keep them coming. So thank you, Tori. Um, so I will end the review of the state's responses um, about governance and then also the use of early childhood data before reviewing the key finding and our recommendations for next steps. So states were first asked if they had a governance structure in place to support the coordination and use of all the early childhood data that Tori has just reviewed. If they responded yes, then we asked additional details about how their governance body was formed and the types of policies and procedures in place to guide access and protection of the data collected. In this map, you see the orange states responded yes to having a governance structure in place and the white states responded no. We had 22 states that responded yes. The composition of these governance bodies varied, however. Uh, we saw about eight state, eight of the 22 states reported having a governance structure that was cross-departmental de or coordinated or what we would call a coordinated agency structure. So for example, Minnesota's governance structure includes members that are appointed from their Department of Health, Education, and Human Services. We had about six states that reported having a governance body specific to their early childhood integrated data system. So for example, in Wisconsin, their governance was formed as part of a federal grant, their Early Learning Challenge Grant, and is, was, is guided by an agreement that was signed for the participate, by the participating agencies for the purposes of managing their early childhood integrated data system. And then we had about five states that reported that a single agency was responsible for overseeing the coordination of early childhood data in their state. So Oregon responded that the Department of Education established a committee to help coordinate cross-agency data sharing. So in addition to wanting to learn more about whether states had a governance structure in place, uh, we also, I'm going to talk a little bit more about learning more about the policies for those that have governance structure um, that they have documented. So for the 22 states with a governing body, we wanted to learn more about the po policies and procedures. We asked if states had documented policies related to determining access to and use of the data. The most common policies and procedures were those regarding data ownership and the appropriate use of shared data. You'll see in this chart, um, the policy or process we asked about is on the left, and then the number of states and the percentage of those states uh, that had a governance body is on the right. Several states reported policies or procedures in place for consulting with data owners about potential data users. For states with established early childhood integrated data systems, a little over one half reported having policies for determining the information needs of the coordinated data system. So as we were saying before, determining what should be collected and how. While only one third of states that did not have an integrated data system reported having these policies. Next slide. Next, we asked about how documented policies and procedures related to data and privacy. Um, the most common policies were those regarding data breach response processes and the regular review of data privacy policies. We found that a smaller number of states had policies regarding informing the public of the data privacy policies and or soliciting public comment on their privacy policies, where we had only 5% of states with governance structures reporting having those policies in place. Next slide. We then asked states um, how, of, of a list of options, how they used um, their integrated data. The three most common uses of early childhood data for the 22 states that responded having a governance structure, the number one was 64% of those, that, those that responded said that they used the data to inform stakeholders 
to share information with stakeholders and policymakers. We have this sort of word cloud here to kind of show where states said that they were most using these data. Um, we had about 60% that use the data for developing standard reports, as well as answering key policy questions. States also, about 55% of states use the data collected to respond to external requests that they receive for data from outside stakeholders. And then as an equal amount use the data to evaluate early childhood program outcomes. And about 45% reported that they use the data for research studies. And a little over a third use the data for accountability or compliance. Only five states uh, reported the data they collected was shared, was used to share with parents. Um, but as I mentioned before, about 10 states reported that they did produce annual reports using their coordinated early childhood data. Next slide. So next I'm going to walk through, I know that was a lot of information that we went through, um, and we actually weren't able to go through all of it. But I wanted to next walk through sort of the key findings um, and the recommended next steps uh, based on what we found in our survey. Next slide. So we had seven key findings we wanted to share with you. Um, first is that based on the changes that we saw from 2013 to our survey in 2018, policymakers still lack comprehensive data needed to assess early childhood policies and outcomes. So as Tori had shared, since 2013, we saw the number of states linking early childhood data across programs decrease from 26 to 22 states. Um, this decrease, we suspect, may be due to the lack of governance, which we also saw decrease, um, as well as funding to sustain efforts to facilitate cross-agency data sharing. So I think what this tells us is that while states did have projects or efforts to link their data, they weren't sustained from when we surveyed states in 2013 to now. However, for the first time, we were able to ask about states having an established early childhood integrated data system versus just the capacity to connect data. Uh, and we found that 19 states did have established systems in place. Second, we found that states linking data are not including all of the early childhood programs um, we identified through ECDC. Uh, home visiting and federally funded Head Start programs are least likely to be linked by states compared to other programs. This exclusion represents a significant knowledge gap because each of these programs focus on comprehensive services for families and is critically important as policymakers use data to make decisions regarding ECE policies. Some positive news in our survey is the increased number of states that link child level data from subsidized childcare compared to 2013. As Tori mentioned, the number of states linking child level data from subsidized childcare programs funded through the Child Care Development Block Grant increased from 12 to 17 states. And we suspect that part of this may be uh, a result of the Early Learning Challenge Grants, um, which is a federal grant that states received, which was used by many states to support data coordination, um, that it may have been a key driver for this progress. And we do note in the report that 13 of the 17 states linking subsidized child care did in fact receive one of those grants. In terms of program data, You'll see in the final report that data about program site quality was linked most frequently by states compared to other types of program data, such as workforce conditions or structural standards, such as class size. Of the 22 states linking program data, 91% linked data measuring the program quality for at least one of the programs. And Again, as, as Tori was mentioning, this is driven by the fact that a lot of states have these systems. And I think we're talking about how do we look at what is the functionality in terms of being able to connect that data with other systems. 
And then in terms of workforce data, states were least likely to link workforce data compared to child and program level data. While most states collect workforce data in a workforce registry, only 15 states reported the capacity to link workforce data across ECE programs, which is critical to answering questions about changing demographics, qualifications, and the needs of the workforce over time. And then similar to the decreases that we saw in terms of states linking overall, we found that fewer states reported having a defined governance structure to support the coordination and use of early childhood data compared to 2013. The number of states with a defined governance decreased from 32 to 22 states in our 2018 survey. This change may be due to the end of funding for the state advisory councils in 2013, which we found in our last survey were responsible for developing a lot of the recommendations for a unified early childhood data collection system. However, it's unclear how many of these advisory councils continued and what the function or their role was after ending in 20, the funding ended in 2013. And last, our key finding is related to states lack pro processes to engage the public about data privacy. As I mentioned, less than one third of states with governance bodies indicated information about data privacy is publicly available or that public comment is solicited. And we feel like it's important that parents are aware of these policies. Next. I'm gonna, looking forward, uh, for policymakers wanting to use integrated data to inform policy decisions, we recommend the following actions. First, establish and strengthen early childhood governance bodies to guide the coordination, security, and appropriate use of early childhood data. This includes identifying funding and support and staffing and resources needed to translate the data into actionable, reports for policymakers and the public. Second, to strengthen states' capacity to securely link data on young children across all state and federal early childhood programs. And this is in response to addressing the gap we see around Head Start and home visiting programs. It's important to implement strategies to incorporate home visiting and Head Start so that policymakers and practitioners have a more comprehensive view of children's learning and development. And the Early Childhood Data Collaborative will be sharing examples um, and strategies um, in moving forward as well around these specific areas. Third, to expand efforts to link data about the early childhood workforce. To construct better policies and practices to support the early childhood workforce, policymakers need data about the current workforce conditions. And in terms of policies um, around data privacy and use of early childhood data, our fourth recommendation is to communicate with parents about data privacy policies and uses of early childhood data. Families need to know that the data about their children are secure and it's important for states to have information about data security and privacy policies that are publicly available and customized to address questions parents may have about how data are accessed and used by other stakeholders. And last, um, we recommend the use of existing data system planning tools and technical assistance to support early childhood systems integration. Um, I'm pleased to share that there are a lot of tools out there that can help states get started. Um, you can engage with federal technical assistance groups such as the State Longitudinal Data System State Support Team. Um, there's the DAISY Center that works around data systems for special education programs, as well as the Privacy and Technical Assistance Center that can provide guidance and feedback on addressing data data privacy issues. For assistance in developing systems, they have several tools that will help you, that will help support your efforts to integrate early childhood data in your state that best meets your needs. And then also the Early Childhood Data Collaborative continues to share resources on our websites and state examples. Um, so for information about 
your early childhood system in your state, you can always go to our interactive website um, and download your information and other reports that we've had before. And you can also sign up for our listserv if you would like to continue to get updates about upcoming reports. Next slide. So I want to get to some of the questions that we have related um, before we end. So someone had asked about access to some of the case studies and the information that was shared on the webinar. Um, we can definitely share those when we send out the resources to states if folks are interested in accessing those specific reports. Um, we also have the sources of all of the information shared linked on the slides. So when the slides go out, you'll have a you'll be able to access the the information to those reports there as well. Another question we had was when you say data is linked, is that related to state dollars only? Um, and so, no, um, the programs that we focused on and we asked about within the state uh, focus on both, it could be federal, it could be state, and it also could be local dollars. And then someone had asked, did we ask why, did we ask states why they don't link or why they stopped linking? Um, we did ask states about barriers to linking their data, which we'll be sharing in a future report. Um, but as I mentioned before, um, right now we're speculating in terms of changes in funding as well as some policies as to why. Uh, states are no longer linking. From our experience working with states and that have had challenges sustaining their data integration efforts, I think one of the challenges is a lot of times it's tied to a specific grant or a specific program. And so there, there's a lot of movement and focus while that grant or those deliverables are happening. But after that, without a plan to sustain those efforts, they're not able to to maintain the the data systems or the work that they've achieved and so i think that's one of the reasons that we're really recommending that states have a governance structure in place that's really focused on addressing those questions and the sustainability of any systems development that you do move forward Uh, we have two more minutes. Someone asked if we can put the tools, data, resources in a window. We can send that out, um, the links to the technical assistance groups that I noted um, in, the, in the email that we send out as well. Let's see, I'm missing that. All of this information will be available online. Oh, uh, someone had asked to repeat again how to locate the agency person who completed the state surveys. So in the final report, uh, you will find the first Appendix A in the report, at the end of the report, the list of all of the state contacts that completed the survey for each of the different states. All right, I think we got through all of the questions with two minutes to spare. All right, um, last slide. Uh, I just, again, uh, Tori and I would like to thank everyone for participating in the webinar today. We know this is a lot of information. Uh, as I mentioned before, our goal here was to really just give you an overview of what's new in the 2018 survey um, and the national results. Um, but our plans are to, in the coming year, to continue to do deeper dives in some of the specific questions around linking Head Start data, around data governance, um, as well as linking health data. So 
please um, continue to send your questions through our website and if you're interested in learning about other resources that we have available um, describing some of the progress that states have made, you can always go to our website at www.ecedata.org. Thank you everyone for joining us today.